How are you doing guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketing online coach. And for today's video, I'm going to show you how you can navigate the business manager and start setting up ads either for your own e-com stores or if you've got e-com clients, how to do that in the most efficient and most effective way possible. So the first thing we need to do is create a business manager. For those that do not know what a business manager is, this is basically the place where you set up, run and analyze your Facebook ads. So to get here, you need to go to www.business.facebook.com. If you don't already have a business manager account, this is what it will look like. If you do have a business manager account, it will look slightly different, but I'll get into that in just a moment. So what you need to do, you might actually need to log in to your Facebook profile first. So even if you haven't got a business manager or anything like that, you've just got a Facebook profile, just log into that Facebook profile first. If you have already logged in and it still says create accounts, then create accounts here. Sometimes the button will be in the middle, but if you're logged in, just click on create account here. Okay. So once you've done that, um, as you can see, I'm already logged in, so it won't actually let me uh, create a business manager. If I click on submit, it'll say I've already got one, but this is basically what you will get if you were logged in and you click on create account. So you can create a business manager name here. Um, this can be completely up to you. It doesn't have to be relevant to the business. It doesn't have to be set in stone. You can edit this at any point in time. Just create a name for your business manager your actual name, which you will then see under people in your business manager. Again, I will get into that in just a second. And then your business email address. And this one is important. It needs to be an address, an email address that you have access to because you will get sent notifications and you'll also get sent um, like codes, etc. if you have set up like two-factor verification and things like that. So make sure that you have access to this business email address. So once you fill all that in, you click on submit and then you'll get something along the lines of this. Now this is called your Facebook business suite and it's basically a concept that Facebook hasn't really perfected as of yet. Basically what they wanna do is create an environment where you can manage your social pages as well as your ads, as well as create content all within the one hub. It hasn't really kicked off just yet. A lot of people do not like this layout, um, especially for media buyers. You know, they would just want to see the actual old school traditional business manager. So if you get this page like this and this is something that you do not like, you want to go back to the old business manager setup, you can actually do so by clicking on the left bottom here. Click on give feedback and then switch to traditional business manager. Click on that. You will be prompted to give some feedback so you can just quickly go through this. Um, just select a topic and then just do other um, not happy with business suite uh, user interface. For example, send feedback. Okay, so now that will refresh and give us the actual business manager, which will look something like this. On the left hand side, you've got all of your tabs in this business manager folder, if you will. So as I mentioned, people will be the top left uh, tab and that will have your name that you just filled out um, you know, to actually create the business manager. And then what you can do is you click on add to add other people to your business manager, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, then the next tab is partners. So if you work together with an agency or you are an agency and you wanna request access to other people's business managers, you can do so with partner access. So if you wanna give another business access to your business manager, then go down to business info, the uh, bottom left, and then this is your business manager ID. If you give someone your business manager ID, then what they can do is they can go to partners and click on add, fill out their business manager ID, and then you can select what assets uh, you wanna give them access to, okay? Then in terms of systems users, this is not really something that uh, we use a lot. Pages are your actual, you know, Facebook business pages. So not to be mistaken with your personal profile, this is your business page. So each Facebook ecosystem consists of one personal profile. That is your actual profile that you log in when you go to facebook.com. Your business page is what people will see if you run ads and that is what we can access uh, or add and access here. 
So click on ads, create a new page if you haven't already got one, request access to a page if you're already, um, you know, if it's already existing one, and then add a page if you're already an admin to that page. So let's say we do add a page here. I'll just type in one of our pages, add page here. It's connected to an Instagram ad all. Chances are, because it's already connected to a different business manager, this might not go so smoothly. And as I already mentioned, this page is already owned by another business manager. So this is how you can do that. If you do get the notification that's owned by another business manager, then ask your client to remove it from the original business manager so that you can add it to this business manager. Then ad accounts, this is basically the account that you run the ads through. So as we can see, we've got one ad account here. You can create up to five ad accounts per business manager. You can add more, but then those ad accounts will be owned by a different business manager. Also, quick side note, if you get an ad account banned or restricted, you will not be able to create more business managers. So if you have the possibility to do so, this is a new business manager, so we can't just yet. But if you have the possibility to create new ad accounts, even though you're not going to use them, just do so anyway, because you never know, something might happen later down the line, um, and then you will not be able to create more ad accounts. So I'll get into the ad account stuff in just a second. I'll just quickly go through all of these. Instagram accounts will obviously be, you know, the Instagram page connected to the business page. If you don't have a business page and you want to correct, uh, connect an Instagram account, you can do so here. Or if you just want to have multiple Instagram accounts here connected and you want to give other people different types of access, you can also do that here. WhatsApp accounts, same thing again. Then data sources, very, very important. Uh, the catalog is basically what you will have connected to your store and that is where you can manage the different types of products that you have on your store and you can use them to basically run Facebook ads. So for example, let's say a customer comes onto your store or your client's store, um, depending on you know, how it's structured, they click on a certain product uh, but they don't actually end up purchasing it. They just click on the add to cart button and then forget about it. Um, if everything is seamlessly connected with, let's say Shopify with Facebook, um, then you can run dynamic catalog ads or dynamic product ads to actually show the customer. So to retarget that exact customer with that specific product that they clicked on. So whether you are an agency that is running ads for clients or whether you have your own online store, a catalog to have that connected is, uh, is extremely valuable and extremely important. Then the pixel, this is what we use to track everything on the pages. Um, so you can click on add pixel here and then just give your pixel a name, click on continue and then choose the option where you can set up the pixel now and then manually add the pixel code to the website if you are not using something like Shopify. If you are using something like Shopify, then do it on Shopify's backend. It's much, much easier and much easier to connect everything. If you manually add the pixel code to the website, you'll basically get this big, long piece of code. It looks very, very scary, but in reality, all we need to do is copy it and then paste it into the header of our website. So if you're using uh, WordPress and you don't have WooCommerce, you don't have pixel your site, anything like that, then you can just download the plugin called headers and footers and then paste that into the header. If you're using ClickFunnels, same thing again, you can add that into your tracking code um, on, on you know, basically on the, on the header of all of your funnel pages. And um, that is basically all you need to do. So it looks scary, but in reality, it is not. Okay, so moving on. If uh, offline events, custom conversions, etc., leave all that for now. This is not um, important as right away, you know, until you actually get everything up and running again, then this is something that you can revisit at a later date. Brand safety is where we verify our domain. So what Facebook now wants to create is a scenario where the business manager is legitimate and verified with an actual business. So that the, basically what they want is the person that is running ads to actually own a business. So there's no people just randomly setting up ads, um, you know, with products that they don't own or businesses that they don't actually run, etc. because that creates a negative user experience. So what Facebook want to do is have business managers that are verified, domains that are verified, and then people that are verified as well. And I do not mean the boutique. I mean that Facebook wants you to upload your identification or your passport uh, so that they know, okay, you are a real person. This profile is a real profile. It's not a fake account that has been used to scam other people out of their money. Okay, so if you click on domain here, add domain, then all you need to do is type in the domain that you own uh, without the www dot or without the HTTPS, 
just type in, for example, um, let's say you own the website google.com, just type in google.com. And then you'll basically get a few options uh, where you can basically choose the easiest way to verify your domain. So you can add a piece of code to your header, just like the pixel, so that there's a connection between Facebook and the website. And then Facebook can see that the website is legitimate and that you actually own it because obviously, you know, if you didn't own the website, you will not be able to paste that piece of code or you can do it via a TXT file on your DNS settings. So whichever way is easier for you. Then going down again, the security center, which is also very, very important. This is where you can set up two factor verification. And once you have been complying with advertising policies, um, you've set up everything properly, you'll be able to also ver um, basically verify your business with Facebook. So what you can do here is set up two factor verification, which means that if someone tries to log into your business manager or your Facebook profile, that you'll be sent a code either via email or text message or via the uh, two factor authentication app. And that way, you know, Facebook knows, okay, this person is the actual person that's trying to log in and not someone that is just trying to break into the business manager, spend a bunch of money uh, that, you know, with a credit card that they don't own. Okay. So what I would probably recommend doing is have everyone on two factor verification, whether you, it's your business manager or your client's business manager, or anything like that, just make sure everyone has two factor authentication set uh, to, you know, basically turned on. And then like I said, after a while, you'll be able to um, start the verification process where you need to upload a couple of documents. One that proves that the business is actually yours and two to prove that the address that you've given Facebook is the actual address of the business. Okay. So for the agencies that are watching this, uh, this is basically the responsibility of the client. So just make sure that you tell the client prior to working together or set it in the contract that the client is responsible for the verification and uh, the maintenance or anything like that of the, the business manager, just so the client knows, okay, if something gets restricted or taken down um, or needs verifying that it's, you know, it's the responsibility of the client, not the agency. Now, if you do not verify the business manager or if you're an agency and your client has not verified the business manager and you start running ads and you're the first person to actually run ads in the ad account, that will be seen as suspicious activity from Facebook. So the way you can see it, for example, I'm in the Netherlands. Uh, let's say I get a client from the US. The client from the US has just set up the business manager, has never run an ad before. The business manager is unverified. Then Facebook see a business manager getting created in the US and then a random guy from the Netherlands uh, running ads on that business manager. It's not verified and Facebook, like I said, Facebook will find that suspicious. So what they will do is they will actually take down the business manager, they will restrict the whole business manager and in account quality, they will say this business manager has been taken down for unacceptable business practices, okay? Now, when you see that, don't worry, you know, this is basically a standard response from Facebook. What Facebook wants there is they want two things. They want you to verify your identity. So like I said, the agency media buyer or the clients, either the, whoever is appealing the account, they need to confirm their identity by uploading the passport. And then secondly, you need to, of course, appeal the business manager. But then secondly, you need to verify the business manager with Facebook by uploading those two documents as mentioned before. Okay. Usually this happens in conjunction with the button appearing, you know, because obviously if you get your business manager taken down and it says unacceptable business practices and the buzz button doesn't appear, then you can't really do anything. So usually, you know, by this time, the button has already appeared. Okay. There used to be a quick hack where you could create an app. Uh, so if you go to apps here and then create an app ID, um, once you go through that process, the button would appear. That is no longer always the case. Okay. So in some situations it is possible, but in most situations it is not. So I'll quickly go through it now just to show you how to do it. And like I said, there's a 50, 50 chance that this still works. Uh, but I've noticed that more often than not now it no longer works. So it doesn't really matter what you fill out here because like I said, the whole point of this is just to get that button, not to actually use the app. So display name, uh, demo app for explain a bit, create the app. Okay, there we go. So this app ID, copy that then go to the app dashboard, click back on business settings. 
go to apps. Okay, so that is already connected because I'm the owner. Um, if it's not already connected here, then what you do is uh, connect an app ID and then paste the app ID that you've just copied. Um, as you can see here, your request was automatically approved because you're an admin of this app. And then you go to security center and then, oh, in this case, the verification button has actually appeared. So like I said, this is 50-50. It's a quick little hack. It's a glitch in the system. Um, but if this doesn't happen, it's just because, you know, you just need to be uh, complying with our policies for a bit, little bit longer. Make sure you set that two-factor authentication up and that you go through all the things that I mentioned in this video. Okay, requests is if someone requests partner access or admin access to your accounts, you can see all of that here. You can see the requests that you've sent, the, requ the requests that you've received, uh, the invites, etc. More often than not, you'll get an email of this anyway. That is why I said make sure that you have access to the email address that you fill out when you create the business manager and then you'll be able to do it via the email. But if not, uh, this is also a way of doing it. Then business info, and this is, like I said, where you fill out all the details of your business. So the legal name of your business, the actual business address, the business phone number, the website, and so on and so forth. Then with the verification process, you click on view details here, and then start the verification. And then this is where you need to prove the information that you filled out on business info is actual legitimate information. So the actual business name, the legal name of the business needs to match the document that you upload. And then the same goes for the address. So you'll basically need to upload two things, proof that the business exists, and then a utility bill that proves that the address and the phone number, etc., actually matches what you filled out here. Okay. Now it's very important that you understand that the details that you fill out here need to match the documents that you upload to Facebook. Okay. So that does not mean that that business is the only business that can run ads on this account. So you just need to make sure that you have a business where you have those documents and that you can prove that you have a affiliation or connection with that business, fill that out here, get the business manager verified. And then the only thing that actually needs to match the ads that you are running is the domain. Okay. So if you are running ads to a specific page, you need to make sure that the domain is verified with Facebook. Okay. But this, this just needs to make sure you all you need to do here is make sure that the, the details that you fill in, that you can prove that those details are correct with that business. Okay. Wink, wink. Hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say there. Um, and then last but most certainly not least how to actually run the ads. So we go to ad accounts here. Also, of course, if it's a very first time you run ads, then make sure you have a payment method attached to the business manager. Um, you can also go to ad accounts, and then click on the little drop down menu here and then view payment methods. And then you can connect a specific credit card to a specific ad account. Or if you just want the entire business manager to use the same um, credit card, then you can do so with payment methods here. But then you go to the ad account, open an ads manager. This is what your ad account looks like. Okay, so that's all loaded up. So this is what your ad account looks like by default if you've never run an ad before. So first of all, we have a notification that the default attribution setting has changed. All you need to know when starting out is that Facebook will use a seven day time frame to see whether or not a purchase came through Facebook or an event came from Facebook. So let's say someone clicks on your ad on day one and then comes back to your website on day five and places an order, you will be able to see that purchase in the ads manager because it happens within Facebook seven day time frame. If it's outside of those seven days, then Facebook cannot confidently say that that came because of the ad, because it could also be that you run an email marketing alongside it or that they've followed the account and you put up a post on Instagram or anything like that. Um, and that is what actually prompted them to make, make the order rather than the actual ad. Okay. So inside the seven days, you'll be able to see it within Facebook outside the seven days. You will not be able to see that within Facebook. Now that is a very, very short and quick way of explaining it. I have another video on the attribution setting on my YouTube channel. So feel free to check that out. I'll quickly um, X out of that for now. So this is what you'll have by default. You'll have three tabs, your campaigns. That is where you set up uh, certain ads with an objective, which I'll get into in just a second. The ad sets, which is just your audiences that you set up and then the actual ads, which is what people see, you know, what they click on the image, the copy, etc. Then we have our time frame, So it's set to maximum. Uh, this business manager was created on the 13th of December. So that's why that is the last 
um, you know, the, the last date you'll see. We can also set this to today, so we can see all the results of today so far. It's a new account, so there are no results. Yesterday, last seven days, last 14 days, last 30 days, and so on and so forth. If you need a custom date, you can do so here. So let's say we want to see um, what Wednesday the 5th to Monday the 10th was like. We can click on update here and then we'll see all of the ads that will run between uh, the 5th of Jan and the 10th of Jan 2022. Now we can also compare data, which um, I don't use all too often unless there's a certain flaw in our you know, strategy, etc. And we need to figure out what's gone wrong. Um, so what we can do is we can compare two different time frames. So let's say our ads were performing really, really well at the first week of the month. But then the last week of the month was very, very bad. So, you know, the results went there, the return on ad spend has, has gone down, etc. We can then basically compare two time frames. So the 5th to the 10th of Jan. Um, and in this case, the previous period was the 30th um, of December to the 4th of Jan. And you can compare those two time frames to see, okay, what has actually increased? Is it that our cost per click is now higher? Is it because our cost per page is now higher? And so on and so forth. Okay, so I'll quickly cancel out of that. And then here, this green button here is where we actually create the campaign. Now, as we can see, we've got um, a few different sections. Now, this will change over time. This is what the layout looks right now. So we have awareness, we have consideration, and we have conversion. Now, for those of you that are in the e-commerce space that are running ads to a Shopify store, for example, you'll most likely only use the conversion objective. I know there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos out there that say, oh, we can also use brand awareness and reach and stuff like that. What you need to understand is if you select conversion as the objective, what Facebook will do is they will go out and find people that are most likely to convert. So let's say you set up a conversion campaign and you basically tell Facebook, I want to optimize this campaign for purchase. Facebook will actively go out and find people that are most likely to purchase. And maybe on the front end, your cost per click may be higher, your click through rate might be lower, but if you let that campaign run, you'll notice that this will get you the most purchases and the lowest cost of purchase as well, as opposed to, for example, a traffic campaign. Yes, that will get you a lot of traffic. The name already says it. It'll get you cheap clicks. It'll get you a high click-through rate. But Facebook will take this out of a pool of people that are most likely to click, not necessarily people that are most likely to convert, okay? So if you are someone that likes to click on ads to like to see, um, you know, what people are doing or, you know, likes to, to click through to see what's on the other end, then you'll basically be marked by Facebook as someone that is most likely to generate traffic. So then the next time someone runs a traffic campaign, you're most likely to see it. Now, if you are someone that buys a lot of products online, that is most likely to place an order after seeing a cool looking ad, then Facebook will consider you a conversion audience and then next time someone sets up a conversion campaign you are most likely to see it okay so conversion campaign is what i would recommend to set up from the start right away do not believe all this oh you need to season the pixel you need to set up traffic first just go for conversions right away and um, it is true that over time facebook will learn who is the most uh, profitable audience and so on and so forth but i'll get into that in just a second okay other campaigns that i would recommend setting up are um, engagement campaigns, which I would recommend doing to retarget. So the engagement campaign itself will not get you purchases or will not get you specific results, but it is an audience that has viewed your video. So let's say you have an introduction video, a case study video, anything like that. Then what you can do is you can set it up on the top of the funnel. So cold traffic that I've never seen your um, you know, your, your store or your service before, and then you can retarget those people and those people will be a bit warmer than just sending out a conversion campaign to cold traffic. Okay. Now, usually I just keep things simple conversion campaign for top of funnel, middle of fun funnel and bottom of funnel. But like I said, if you have a unique situation where you have a unique product, the product market fit is just not there for Facebook then you can try out things like engagement campaign. And then lead generation campaign, the name again already says it, this will generate you emails, calls, and so on and so forth. So if you don't have a website with a form or you notice that uh, sending traffic to a website with a form is getting you very high leads, very expensive leads, etc., it's not really profitable for you, then you can try out the lead generation campaign as well. But for now, we are just going for conversions. Store traffic is offline. So if you have an offline physical store, then you can use store traffic to basically create campaigns 
around your store. So let's say you have a store in a certain high street in LA or in London or wherever, and you want people to see advertisements when they are actually in and around your store, then you can set up a store traffic campaign here. Catalog sales is what I mentioned previously as well. When you have specific products that people have already clicked on, um, then you can set up a catalog and then run a catalog sales campaign so that people will see the specific products that they added to cart but didn't actually end up purchasing. They will see that in the ads and then you can have an offer that they just can't refuse because you know they're already interested in it. So all they need to do is have that little nudge, that little bit of uh, convincing and they'll place an order with your store or your service as well. But for now, conversions, and then as you can see here, we can name our campaign, but we can also click on continue and we'll have the old school setup, um, as you can see here, and we can give everything a name, etc., uh, from here as well. So the campaign name, this is something that only you see. It's just to keep things nice and organized in your business manager. Um, usually I'll give the initials of my agency and then the objective of the campaign. So in this case, top of funnel, which for me stands for cold traffic, people that have not heard of the brand, service, store, anything like that just yet. And then I will basically set the objective. So let's say we want to start with image testing first. I'll call this image tester. And then let's say we have a specific country or something like that. Then I'll also add that to the campaign. So let's say we want to run this in the US, image tester. Um, and then you can maybe give it the date. So Jan uh, 2022, okay. Campaign budget optimization basically means that Facebook will manage your budget on a campaign level. So let's say we have three audiences, then what Facebook will do is decide how the budget is allocated over the three audiences. Let's say we have $100 a day, then it won't be $33 on ad set one, $33 on ad set two, and so on and so forth. It will actually be, for example, $80 on ad set one, and the remaining $20 on ad set two and three. And Facebook will decide that for us, which can go one or two ways. You know, it can work really, really well because, you know, like I said, Facebook already knows what audience to go for. I can see right off the bat that audience one is the best performing. Or if you want to have more control over this, if you want basically to decide, um, you know, which, uh, if they all have equal spend, which one is going to be the most profitable, then we keep this switched off. And then on an audience level, on an ad set level, also uh, called ad set budget optimization or ABO, um, then, you know, that is where we can manage that. So if we keep this switched off, then on an ad set level, so audience here, we'll be able to manage the budget. If we switch it on, we can set the budget here. So let's say 20 a day. And then on an ad set level, so where we select the audience, that feature is now gone because we've already told Facebook, we're gonna manage the budget on a campaign level. There is no right or wrong. You can get results either way. It's, to be fair, mainly it's personal preference. Um, I was a big advocate of CBO when it first came out. Nowadays, um, it depends on the product, the niche, the type of um, ads that we are running. Sometimes I like to keep control of my own hands and then I'll run it on ABO. But if you wanna keep things simple, you can just set it up to CBO by default and you just have the one budget um, and then you'll know, okay, Facebook will only spend around $20 a day, whereas, which is very important to understand as well, if you set it on an ad set level and you add more ad sets or add more audiences to the campaign, then Facebook will spend that specific budget per audience. So let's say we have a $5 per ad set and we set that to ABO. If you then duplicate that ad set 10 times, you're not going to spend the $5, you're going to spend 10 times $5. Okay, so on an ad set level, again, we can give our ad set a name. So usually I just stick to uh, what it is. If I've only got the one ad set, I'll basically just copy over the campaign um, the campaign name. But let's say we, we wanna run this in the US and then we set up a new ad set and then we wanna run that in the UK, then you can do so on the ad set level. But for now, we'll just stick to the one. So I'll just quickly delete this. Back to the ad set. Okay, and then make sure that you have your Facebook pixel connected, which we already did, of course, um, if you have been following along with uh, the business settings part of this video. And then audiences, as you can see, right now we are targeting just the Netherlands, 18 to 65, all genders. Now, of course, uh, back in the day, it was very, very important that you select a specific audience here so that you can help Facebook pinpoint, you know, who you actually want to target. Nowadays, that is no longer the case, okay? We are living in a post iOS 14 world. For those of you that are in the digital marketing space, you will understand what I mean by that. If you are not familiar with digital marketing or if you're not familiar with iOS 14, 
What you need to understand now is that Apple have introduced a pop-up that will enable people to opt in or opt out of tracking. If people opt out of tracking and you select, let's say people that are interested in horse riding have opted out of tracking, then when you select the interest horse riding here, the person that has opted out of tracking will not get your ads, okay? So what happens then, let's say 50% of people opt out of tracking and you select, um, let's say golf, for example, as a audience. So we are now looking for people that are interested in golf. There we go. So in the Netherlands, between the ages of 18 and 65, there are 14 million or 12 to 14 million people interested in golf. Now that's quite a lot of people. Um, what you need to understand now is that not all of these 12 to 14 million people will be able to be targeted because a large percentage will have opted out of tracking. Now, another thing to remember, when I mentioned uh, the conversion campaign when setting things up before, um, this also has an impact on that because this is the total audience interested in golf, okay? So if we were to select everyone and we select the interest golf, then this would be the audience, but we're not selecting everyone. We are selecting people that are most likely to convert. We selected a conversion campaign. We are optimizing for pages. That means that maybe only 2 million people out of this 14 million audience will actually be most likely to purchase. So then the audience diminishes from 14 million to 2 million. And then you also have the people that have opted out to track them. So in reality, you think, uh, so you think you're targeting 12 to 14 million people in reality, that might only be 100,000 people or a million people. This is the estimated audience size. As we can see here, estimates may vary significantly over time based on your target selections and the available data. Okay, so Facebook can't give us the data of people that have opted out. Doesn't mean they don't have it, they just can't give it to us and that is why the audience size may vary. Now, what Facebook have already uh, come out and said as well is that um, by default, Facebook will look beyond the audience that you select here. So just because you select the audience, uh, the interest golf, does not mean that Facebook will only stick to that audience. Because of the issues with the tracking, Facebook will also look beyond. So basically, the audience that we select here isn't as relevant as we once thought. Um, and nowadays, I actually just keep this as broad as possible, and then I just make sure that for the golf example, that I make sure to mention that in the ads that this is for people interested in golf. So I qualify my audience on an ad level rather than here by the interest because the interest isn't as relevant anymore. Okay, so locations, ages, uh, you can select multiple locations here. You can also exclude specific locations. So for example, let's say you want to target the whole of Europe, just not Germany, then you can do that here. If you want to target worldwide, just not certain parts of America because that's where you can't deliver or ship there, then you can do that here as well. You can also select people that are traveling to this location if you have a product that suits that. Uh, people recently in this location, so that's not necessarily people that live there and so on and so forth. Uh, by default, it'll be set to people living in or recently in this location. So if you have a fairly expensive product that might only be relevant for people that actually live in the location we've selected, then make sure you select people living in this location. Okay, very important to remember because let's say we are selling furniture, high you know, expensive furniture, high ticket furniture, and we are selecting people that have been recently in the location. So people that are traveling in the Netherlands, people that are just spending a day in the Netherlands to shop, they will not be as interested in buying a very expensive piece of furniture because they don't live there. They would rather get that piece of furniture in wherever it is that they live. Okay, you can also select certain languages. This is very interesting for countries that have multiple languages. For example, in Belgium, if you would just wanna target the French part of Belgium, that you can do so here, um, or the Dutch part of Belgium, you can do so here as well. Um, you can also save that audience if you know you're gonna use that um, you know, multiple times. You can do that so here, give that audience a specific name. And then in terms of placements, you can actually select where you're going to be uh, running the ads. So do you just want your ads on Facebook or just want your ads on Instagram? You can do everything here. You can also select the different devices. So if you have a, camp, uh, a landing page or a website that is mobile optimized, just not desktop optimized, you can deselect desktop here and then you know, okay, only people on mobile will actually see my ads. Interesting for, for example, if you have specific apps uh, that you're promoting uh, that only works on mobile, there's no point in sending people on the desktop to the app store because it just won't work. More often than not, I will just leave automatic placements on 
Why? Because Facebook know right away or within a very, very short amount of time, who is most likely to convert and what placement is most likely to convert. So if you start taking over from Facebook here, first of all, you need to ask yourself, how, in, how likely are you to outsmart Facebook with all of this? Um, but you're just getting in Facebook's way. So usually I would recommend keeping it as simple as possible, just going for automatic placements. And then the attribution setting, which like I said, I have a completely separate video for on my YouTube channel. We'll then go to the ads level. This is where we can actually create our advertisement. So we can give our ad a name. So let's say we have two images and one piece of copy. We can call this one image one, copy one. And then once we've finished it, we can duplicate it here and then create image two, copy one. And then we have two of the same uh, ads with a different image. We can choose single image or video, which by default I will probably go for. Carousel, if you want two or more scrollable images, you know, so you can basically swipe left to right um, or a collection page, you can do that as well. Um, what you can also do is use an existing post. So if you have a post that works very well on Instagram, that's getting a lot of engagement, a lot of comments, you can also use that um, here and then basically just have that as a ad to people that aren't necessarily following you, but you know, might be interested as well. Important to remember that the existing post is not editable. So if you have a, uh, if you don't have a call to action on the post, you will not be able to add that here. You will need to edit the original post. Okay. So create ads, single image or video. We can add our image here, or we can add a video as well. Uh, the primary text. So if we just quickly select an image, I'll just select this one for now. Next, done. So primary text will be at the top here. So hello, buy our products will appear at the top. Okay, and then the headline is at the bottom. So hello, buy more products. This will appear at the bottom as well. As you can see here, hello, buy more products. Then the description will be below that again. We have a lot of products. As you can see below the buy more products, we now have, we have a lot of products. And then what we can also change is the call to action button. We can have apply now, book now, download, etc. cetera. Um, this depends on what it is that you're promoting. So usually I'll go for learn more, or if you have a discount, just do get offer. And as you can see that has changed here. Okay, now as you can see, this is the preview for the Facebook feed. If you want to see different uh, different feeds, etc., you can do so here. So this is what it will look like on Instagram. This is what it looks like on Facebook Marketplace. Um, at least, let's see if we can get it up. No, for some reason it's not letting us because we need to log into Facebook. Um, but this is basically where you can see what it will look like on different placements. Now, if you want to edit a specific placement, so let's say it looks good on the Facebook news feed, just not on Instagram stories, you can actually do so here. So edit, edit media, and then we can select 916, for example, for stories. We can keep it original for the feed. And then for the right column, uh, we can also set it um, so it's a bit more zoomed in. So there's no like, white space above and below it. And let's say, okay, it looks good, but it's just not in the middle. We can actually change that slightly here. So we can have it more to the right, or we can have it nice and neatly in the middle here. And if you're unhappy with it, you can just go back to the original as well. That's completely up to you. Um, again, the base, you know, it, this is dependent on the niche, the product, etc., which performs best. That is completely up to you to test and find out. And then the destination URL, that is what you fill out here. So if people click on this ad, this is the page that they'll go to. So let's say we want to send them to that more live page, moreLifeGarments.com. Then of course, make sure that that is verified with Facebook, and then you can send it to this specific page. And then here at the bottom, you can see all of your tracking. Of course, this is a uh, new business manager, so nothing is set up here. But if you selected the pixel, you've added the pixel to your store and to your business manager, you'll be able to see the pixel here and you'll be able to make sure that you know everything is set up correctly. If you have multiple stores with multiple pixels, then you can basically you know, make sure that it's all pointing in the one direction because if you don't have a pixel on your store, then you will not be able to see in your ads manager whether or not you know, a purchase has taken place or whether or not someone has added to cart, okay? Speaking of events, so once you're happy with this, just click on publish and you'll be able to see this in your ads manager. As you can see here, we now have one campaign, it's in draft. Uh, we have one audience, which one ad set, 
and this is the one image. So as I mentioned, if you want two images with the one campaign, just duplicate it here. And now we have two the same. So let's say we call this image two. And then we remove the image. So you want everything else the same. You want to say, we wanted to say hello by products, that's completely fine. Uh, but we want a different image. We actually want the back um, or we have the back on the other one. So let's do the front of the hoodie in this case as one ad and we want the back of the hoodie on the other ad. Click on done here. So now we have two identical ads on the same page to the same audience within the same campaign, just that one has a different image. Okay, so once we are happy with that, of course, you can publish here. Uh, we now want to know, okay, we now have two ads. How are they performing? So by default, the columns will be set to performance. That means that you'll see your ad name, the delivery in draft means it's not published yet, the ad set name, the bid strategy, the, the where you're using the budget. So we had to set to CBO. We select the budget on campaign level. So you can see here it says using campaign budget. When you last edited it, the attribution set and so on and so forth. Now, when you're just starting out or when you just want to know, okay, how is this campaign performing? This is not very relevant. So what I would recommend doing, clicking on columns performance, customize columns, and then on the right from, let's say the, actually, you know what, we can just delete all of this. We can just start afresh. We can now select the metrics that we actually want to know. So for me, very important, the amount spent. Why? Because of course we want to know how much we're spending and how much we're getting back. Then what I like to know is the outbound clicks. Why? Because that is the amount of clicks that we are getting that are people going off of Facebook onto our website. So if we have a link in our ad, so a read more link or there's a comment that has a link, etc., then then um, you know, that will also generate a click. So you'll see your cost, per, your, your amount of clicks, your clicks all will go up, but don't, those are not the clicks that we want. We want to see the outbound clicks. So in this case, the outbound click, we want to know how much it costs us to get a click and we want to know our click through rate. So we want to know, okay, for, for every 100 people that see our ad, how many people are actually click on through to the website. Then once they are on our website, we want to know how many people are actually viewing the product, which if you have anything set up with Shopify, will be the view content event. Then of the people that view products, how many people are actually adding to cart? Once they've added to cart, how many people are actually proceeded with the checkout process? And then of course, the most important one, how many people are purchasing? So purchases, value of the purchase, which is basically the money that you make. So let's say uh, we spend $10 on ads, we sell one hoodie, a hoodie is $100. Then we'll see amount spent 10, $10 in the ads, page conversion value 100. Now, because we've spent 10, and our page conversion value is 100, that doesn't mean that we've just made 100 because we also have costs, we have the ad costs as well. So what we wanna know is the return on ad spend, which is the ROAS, and that will be, if we use those metrics, that will be 10. So apply. So now we can see here, of course we don't have data, but we can see the outbound click through rate, the content view, the cost per content view, add to cart, checkout initiated and purchase, everything nice and neatly in uh, these columns here. Now, if you're happy with this and you want to, you know, you want to save this for future reference, you can also click on save here. You can give it a name. So we'll just call this um, columns, nice and neat. Okay. And then the next time you go into your ads manager, it'll say columns, nice and neat. You click on that and you'll have everything nicely organized. Okay. So that is it for today's video. Hope you got some out of this. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.